This is Dr. Jenny, and today we're looking at predicting airfares on a new route, which is problem 6.3 in the data mining textbook. The first thing I want you to do is read through the problem, and then I want us to look at the steps in data mining. Uh, this goes back to chapter 2 of your textbook, but this is look. these are the steps. You develop an understanding of the purpose of the data mining project, and in this case, that would mean actually looking at all the different um, predictors and responses. Uh, so if you have the data in front of you, this is going to help you understand this a, a little bit better. You'll notice, too, that the real purpose for us is to predict affairs. So it's already telling us even what model that we might want to use. But what we'll do is we'll be working to create a correlation table as well as some uh, graphs that will help us see the connections bet between uh, FAIR and some of the um, predictor values. And then it says obtain the data set to be used in the analysis. Well, this data set is from 1996, and it's the third quarter, so it's only one quarter of data. Um, if you were actually doing this, you would probably need um, many more records. You usually need, uh, when you're doing prediction, you need at least 3,000 records. And so this only has 638 records, but it does help us learn how to use the steps. And then it's um, got explore, clean, and uh, reprocess the data. And so, for example, in this problem, one of the things we'll be doing is actually reorganizing the data because since our prediction, prediction variable, what we're trying to predict is fair, we want that to be the uh, one on the, the value on the left, and then all the predictor things that will help us determine that fare would be on the right. So we're going to have to um, do some things like, uh, you know, basically exploring and cleaning it up. It also means that, and I'm just going to go pull this off here a minute, it also means that we want to, um, here's the table, the data codes, and you'll see the S code, S city, and so on. You would want to clean this up so that it's more of a table value, so that you will have your, um, you know, your codes listed and then your uh, what those mean, so that it's a little easier when you go back to them. Because obviously, some of these things are not predictors, and some of them are. So um, these are just some things that that you would want to um, clean, part of the cleanup data. You can also do power pivots and some. Uh, pivot data just to make sure that you're, uh, you know, you could do a, um, besides correlation matrix, some scatter plots to see what ones actually uh, work together. And then we, in step four, we'll reduce, reorganize, and transform and separate into training, validation, and test data. Well, if I go back to this original data again, you're going to see uh, that in this data, we have some things that say yes and no. And so that's not going to work in when we're working with data. We have to actually transform those. And that's when you're doing uh, some of the dummy variable things because we can't use yes and no. We can use 0, 1, uh, but we can't use yes or no. So um, you, that's part of the transformation process as well. And then um, when we say reduce, reorganize, a lot of times we don't need some of that data and we can actually um, pull that off and then separate into trading, validation, and test data sets. That's one of the steps of doing a data model. You will always do that. And then you're determining the da data mining task. In this case, it's a prediction because we're trying to predict FAIR. And we're predicting FAIR at both using Southwest and not using Southwest. And that's the same thing with uh, choosing the data mining technique to use. Um, you would actually present in your um, plan why you're choosing that uh, technique and why it matches with um, the purpose of what, what you're doing in this project. Then just to say uh, using algorithms, that's just basically the uh, trial and error process of using some of the predictors to see which one is going to give us the, uh, in this case, the, um, the best R squared. In other words, what is the best prediction uh, that we can make using the variables uh, that we have. And then um, you, you see here where, we, where we're interpreting the results of the algorithms. That, that's part of the process 
of where you're actually uh, testing your final choice against the test data. And sometimes what will happen is you'll come up with your equation and y equals a plus bx plus cx plus dx plus ex and so on. And then you'll take that and apply that data model, which is step nine, apply it to that example. So for example, what they might do is say, uh, this is the value we put for these and then you apply that model to it. And so that's exactly what this problem does. It does all those things. And I'm going to um, just take you through this, um, understand the purpose. When you are understanding the purpose of the data, you want to state all the facts. And I haven't stated them all here, but you definitely want to say what are you predicting and you need to talk about uh, fair in this case as, as it relates to why. Um, and then the data set, you want to be very specific with the facts and so on. Um, in this case, you would want to say that it's not enough data to really do a, a, the best prediction um, because it is only third quarter data. And it might be that third quarter data isn't a good, um, you know, you might need an entire year of air routes. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll go with this. And in this case, will it be Southwest or another discount airline? So in, in reality, you have two Ys, uh, one fare with Southwest and another fare if they use a different discount airline. And uh, if you were doing this as your actual business intelligence plan, for example, you would have to have a lot of research on the different strategy uh, that Southwest has as compared to the other airlines. That would have to be part of your uh, model and part of your discussion because it's not always just saying what's a purpose, but it's also saying why. So why is Southwest, um, you know, why are these different um, predictor values, these coupon and and uh, I can't even think of some of them, but why are they important to Southwest strategy and would that be different to a different airline? So that's just getting us through understanding the purpose and kind of overview of the data. And I'll stop here and we'll go, we'll go to the next one.